Right, so this is Gerd Leonhard, Futurist, uh, keynote speaker here at Digital London, uh, mediafuturist.com is my web address. Uh, you were talking about um, the, the, the impact that data is going to have and certainly the, the role that social media networks are going to have there. Could you, could you tell us how you see that um, progressing? Well, uh, let's put this way. I, mean, I think what's happening in the last few years is that users are becoming the content of these services, right? So, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, we are we are essentially the content there, right? Uh, much like eBay, we all we are also the content, right? So, the data that we contribute becomes worth a lot to the companies having it, and therefore the likes of Google and Twitter and Facebook have to incentivize us using it, but they also have to give us control over what it means. But basically, data has become the new oil, as, as I like to say. This is not for me, actually, from somebody else, but it's a good, it's a good sort of meme, right? Uh, basically, means that data is worth so much now that you can ask for stuff in return, as we've been asking for you, for uh, for Google. But in a way, data is also becoming sort of a Faustian bargain, right? But because we, we're giving a lot, and sometimes we don't exactly know what comes back, and we may actually have made a deal with somebody that is going to ask for a lot more than we're willing to give. And uh, how do you, s you see that progressing then? Do you, do you feel that people will be more open to giving data or will there be, will people receive the amount that they wish to offer? I think the trend is undeniable that when 5 billion people are connected to the internet, the data flood is going to be humongous right? and they'll be worth more than, than oil, really. Um, the companies that are entitled to drill into that data, to use it, to harvest it, to mine it, to, to give us stuff back, right? they're going to have to be very good at creating value for us. Right? Otherwise, we'll reject them or we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get rid of them because they are essentially, it's like, it's like taking oil and putting it into my bathtub rather than making gas for my car. You know? They have to really create value. So this is for marketing people. What that means is that unless they really are responsible and they're really offering good value, so targeted ad advertising that is completely synchronized with, with what I like, right? we're going to reject them. So the bar is going up for marketing, clearly. And in terms of the brands that you see that are already adopting this, is, is it very much going to pick up the pace quite quickly or is it going to be a long period uh, where this develops? Uh, how quickly do, do you think this will happen? I think for a lot of brands this basically means that the empowerment of the consumer and the business partners is going to be humongous, right? And, and basically they have to embrace the idea that they can't sometimes control what people do there. They have to let them go ahead and trust the user a lot more. For example, uh, uh, Fiat has done this in Brazil to where they, they let the people design the next car and that was a very so the Mio, Fiat Mio was a very important campaign. Uh, Pepsi refresh project, I mean these kind of ideas are going in this direction. Right? Basically when the user is contributing data and I have to synchronize with the user and the customer, then it makes them more powerful. So that removes my sort of idea of buying media, becoming more earned media, that I still have to buy them, right? because they have to use the data tools. So this is a major change in terms of the paradigm. Does that mean then that you foresee crowdsourcing becoming a complete a staple of all marketing? I think the term crowdsourcing is uh, is a little bit misleading there because we're already doing, we have been doing this for a long time, right? Uh, it's going to become a complete standard, right? Because basically crowdsourcing means I'm really synchronizing with the users that are interested. So the reason that Kickstarter has raised money for 27,000 people is not because somebody is forcing them or somebody is you know, enticing them in some way, right? It's because they believe in the product. And marketing is the same thing. And ideally speaking, marketing would be the people believing in the product telling others, right? So it's the same principle in general. As a futurist then, where do you see social networks going? Do you see them working together more, becoming, uh, what is the future for them and, and where do you think it will lead in the next few years? Well, social networks are highways now, right? I mean, if we can't, if we don't have highways, we can't drive. So we're driving on these huge highways on Twitter, Facebook, Google, Tencent, QQ, Orkut, you know, whatever it is, right? And that's really crucial for us, right? But they're going to have to work really hard to create a standard. Like, you know, on a highway, you can't pass on the, on the wrong side of the, or, you know, on, on the emergency lane going 200 miles an hour. You have to have some rules, right? So they have to have standards, they have to have visibility, transparency, they have to add value. And some of them may even charge for the highway or the bridge, right? uh, which wouldn't be unheard of. So uh, I think quality is going to be a major issue here, uh, quality of the experience. Right? Uh, so the noise is going to be humongous. Right? So filtering the noise will be a big role for broadcasters.
broadcasters are going to overlap with social media. Right? I mean, essentially, you could argue, you could argue Facebook is the next BBC. Yeah. Right? I mean, they are broadcast. Right? So in five years, we're going to see a lot of broadcasters merging uh, forces with social media platforms. And, and of course, using APIs and so on, it will be easy. You, you were talking about uh, the role of paywalls, and um, uh, you didn't seem too keen on the idea. Where, where do you think paywalls will end up going? Well, my, 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 I'm convinced that basically you, you can't force people to pay on the internet. You either get them to pay and attract them to pay, or you don't get the money. Right? Yeah. Forcing people to pay is a scenario that comes from the cable business, you know, cable TV. You don't get to see the program if you don't have the cable, mostly, right? Or buy a CD, you know. And that, in a digital society, that is a useless concept. So there's no such thing as, as, as a forcing as a pay. I always say, and I got this from somebody else, I forgot, I think it was Jeff Jarvis, who said it's not about the, the pay, it's about the wall. We find a smarter way to collect money, you know, through bundles, through upselling, through freemiums. People will pay. I mean, clearly people are paying, right? So it's not the people's fault that people aren't paying for movies or music, right? But it's, it's a system's fault of not having the right pr process and the right packaging. So I think for newspapers and news, clearly, if we take away the word paper and put that over here and say we don't really need paper, but we need news, people are willing to pay for news in all different sort of permutations and embodiments. You know, because the main thing is for us to get good information in a short period of time right, for value. The question is about value. Uh, final question: You're talking about. Uh, tele telecommunications companies uh, working with travel companies. Oh, why do you foresee that? Well, telcos are uh, telecoms and ISPs and mobile operators are running the network for us, right? And everything we're doing is becoming dependent on the network. Right? I mean, when you Google something, when you use an app, when you, I mean, you need the network, right? It's cloud computing time, right? So basically, the telcos are going to get involved with all of those businesses because they they are able to bundle education virtual transportation, telepresence, media, you know, and, and so you'll see all the telcos creating really interesting scenarios there because if they don't do that, everybody else makes the money and they just have to pay for the shipping.